that's one of them songs when you hear it, you just want to keep on because he's real to somebody. I know that Jesus is real to me. He gives me the victory. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but the Lord, he has been good to me. Awfully, awfully good to me. I have no complaints. I could complain, but I won't complain. Wouldn't do me no good. If I'm a complainer, it's going to be because of something I've done, not because of what he did or what he didn't do. Because God is good. Amen? Amen. Truly, I'm sure the Lord he is well pleased with all the testimonies that have gone up before him. I would have liked to have spent the next half hour listening to testimonies and not had to get up here. Hallelujah. But the Lord says differently. Amen. We still have to receive something from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us remember our pastor in a very, very special way on his vacation, him and our first lady. Amen. That the Lord may bless them. Amen. And give them that well-needed rest. Amen. I know that it is. It is a job. It's a job when you, when you have to do God's will. And his will is to feed his sheep. Not only feed them, but to give them direction. And so he has his hands full. Not that we are hand full, but he has his hands full. Amen, amen. Truly the Lord, he is good and he's worthy to be praised. And I give honor to God. Honor to my wife, amen, who is sitting up here on the rostrum. Honor to all those who are here, the deacons, yes. our musicians, yes. and the saints of God. Yes. Amen. The message on today can be found in the book of Acts. I'm going to try not to be too long, considering I only got 25 minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I try not to be on a time restraint when it comes to doing God's work. When God does things, he does it on his time, not on our time. And it's good to have a program in order. But when God says change the order of program, we have to be obedient to the Spirit of God. It's so awesome to see everybody in the house of God who has come into the house of God on today. I get double duty today. Amen. I enjoyed my Sunday school lesson this morning. I enjoyed teaching Sunday school lessons. The question was asked at one time, Pastor asks, do you rather want to teach or preach? I said, well, whatever the Lord wants me to do, it really don't matter. <laughs> it's totally up to him. I'm just trying to be obedient. Amen. Amen. In our good books on today, found in the book of Acts, chapter number two. I have a little bit of reading. And I'll do the reading so you can sit back and relax and listen. Take it in. But it's coming out of the book of Acts, chapter number 2. And I'm going to start at verse number 1. For your hearing on today. I hear pages turning. I'll wait. Don't worry. Acts, chapter number 2. Starting at verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Somebody say where they were sitting. Where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost 
and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Last verse. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. One more verse. Book of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 6. One of the verses out of the Beatitudes. He said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Eternal Lord and Savior, we thank you for your word. We thank you thus far for just the reading of your word. Now we pray for clarity of thought. We pray that you may allow your spirit to lead and to direct with sensitivity of your spirit as your speaker. Allow me to present your word unto your people that they may be edified, that they may be encouraged, that they may be lifted up. This I ask, trusting and believing that you shall do. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. It's quite a bit of reading. So if you don't plan on reading today, just did it. My theme for today, are you thirsty yet? Are you thirsty yet? Subtopic, he's pouring it out. He's pouring it out. Hunger. When we look up the word hunger, Marion Webster has given it a definition as to being a very great need for food. 
a severe lack of food. Not only did Merriam-Webster describe it as a great need or a severe lack of food, but also he said it's a strong desire, a strong desire for something or to do something. When we take a look at the word hunger, we normally would associate it with food. Being a natural thing, being natural beings, we would look at it as being something dealing with food. We very rarely associate it with anything other than food. We don't use a word such as hunger to give definition as to needing something to eat. We'll substitute hunger and we'll say, I'm starving. When you're not really starving, you just want something to eat. You may be in a, a great need for something to eat because you might have missed a meal in the past hour. And so now, I'm starving. <laughs> we don't use a word such as hunger to give definition as to our having a strong desire for something or to do something. When it comes to having a strong desire for something or to do something, we'll then speak with the vernacular of ordinary speech. We'll say, oh, I got to have that. When we really want something, I got to have it. Can't wait. I, I, I got to have it. I don't hunger for it, but I just got to have it. Amen. Or we'll say, I, I really have to. You, you got to go somewhere. I really have to go. I, I got to go to that show. I can't miss it because I've been waiting on it for the past six months. And it comes out, I, I just got to go see it. I don't hunger to go see the show. We have a way of speaking in our time to thirst. Webster talks about the very great need for something to drink. I thirst for a cold glass of water. Amen. Nobody speaks that way around here. No, no. I thirst for some water. Now, I'm thirsty. I need something to drink. Yeah. We speak in a whole different way when it comes to certain words. Webster also made the same statement as thirst being a strong desire for something. So we have to hunger being a strong desire and also to thirst being a strong desire. These same methods of communicating that there is a thirst are present. Whether it be I got to get something to drink or I got to have that. So we don't use this formal method of speech in our time. We use the informal method to get our point across. Now, in our text, being quite lengthy. I'm not going to break down every word. We'd be here till midnight. And probably still wouldn't be able to break them all down. But we had a particular we are at a particular time witnessing a particular event. The particular time is a time that has been talked about over the ages. The last days. These last days. Yet there are some not having the understanding of the meaning of the last days. We talk about the last days. We talk about the closing days of time. We talk about the time between the birth of Christ and his second coming. Those are the last days. The writer Luke, when writing the book of Acts, he wrote with informative information as to all that Jesus began to do and to teach after his ascension. His last instruction to his disciples was to wait in Jerusalem until they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, we've recently had a few young saints that were baptized in the Holy Ghost, an unexplainable feeling that has come over them. 
it wasn't just a feeling, but it was by way of evidence. It was by way of hearing God speak through them. God speaking through them, not I went to church and I received a feeling. It feels good when God touches you. You walk into the house of God and the word of God is going forth and he just... See, now he has just, just laid a fingertip on you and you're like, ooh. Whoa, I'm saved. <laughs> See, because that's how the Holy Ghost feels when God touches you. You feel all good inside. You just, you just want to run and you want to shout. You want to tell somebody how good God feels. But so many times people are going into the house of God and they're receiving a touch from God and they're mistaking it for the receiving of the Spirit. But here, the writer Luke, he's writing and he's giving some information and he told uh, these disciples when he was here for those 40 days, Jesus did. He told them, he said, to wait in Jerusalem until they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Acts 1, 4 through 5 states, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Now, he said you should not depart from Jerusalem, but there was that possibility of somebody leaving without receiving what they needed. We don't want to come into the house of God with the expectancy to receive something and to leave without receiving that which we expected to receive. But a lot of us are coming into the house of God and we sit down and we warm up the bench. We get real comfortable in the pews and we go out the same way that we came in because we didn't come in with an expectancy to receive something from God, but we came in to say that we went to church. So there is that possibility of departing before receiving that which you need. So he said they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me, for truly John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Not very long. And you're going to receive that which I'm telling you to stay there. Don't depart from there until you receive it. Right. It's not going to be very long. So just, just be patient. Just hold out. Don't give up. Don't leave. Stay there until you get what it is I told you you would get. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said, stay right there. Do not leave. So Luke is supplying us with direction that Jesus himself had given to his disciples. Direction that through obedience, a promise that was made would be brought to pass. See, now, Jesus, he, he gave some promises he gave some promises, but he didn't give promises without the expectation of us being obedient in the opportunity of receiving. We have to be obedient in order to receive the promises of God. Amen. You got to be obedient. You can't just try to hold God to his word when you yourself are not doing your part. He expects some things out of you, so do your part if you expect something out of him. I'm going to 
gonna take my time. I'm gonna get through this. It's 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 it's, it's a good thing. This is. This is some good informative information that, that we have here today. We're, we're just going to try to get it, and we're, we're not going to leave. We're not going to leave. We're not going to depart until we get that which God has for us to receive. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So as these disciples, along with others, were in the upper room. Now, I like this, this, this upper room. Uh, it was simply... An upper chamber is what it was, if you yeah. will. This upper room was considered a third story apartment. I don't know about anybody who live here live in a third story apartment, even a big house. My sister, I know she's got a third or four story house. I mean, it's big. So I understand that they were up quite high. So as they were up in the upper room, we may have just thought about this in a way of, of just being upstairs when we u usually would read this story talking about the saints, talking about them being in the upper room, the 120 being in the upper room. We probably just thought about a two-story house or a building, but actually they were on the third level of that building, hallelujah. And it reminds me of when the Apostle Paul, when he was long preaching, the Bible says in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And they're sat in a window. Now, we probably all heard the story about this individual who sat in this window on this third story. Hallelujah. It was this young man named Eutychus being falling into a deep sleep. He sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taking up dead. So now it kind of gives you an understanding as the upper room, it just wasn't upstairs, but it was up on the third loft, hallelujah. So they were up quite high as they were in this upper chamber, hallelujah. And the Bible goes on to tell us, hallelujah, that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord, and they were all in one place on one accord. That one place where they were was not a place of going. It was not a place of going on vacation too. It was not a place where people would talk about wanting to go, but it was a place of prayer, and it was a place of supplication. They were all on one accord praying to God, not the prayer of God, but the prayer to God. Along with their prayer, they were giving their petitions. They were asking God not only to do something, but they were asking God to change something. How many of us come into the house of God? And as we pray to God, we're asking God to do something for us. We're not only asking him to do something for us, but we have some strongholds as we talked about this morning, and we're asking God to change some things about us. We don't just go to God always begging. We don't go to God just always asking for this. We don't go to God always just asking for that. But we also go to God and ask him, Lord, please help me. Help me to change the way that I am so that I can be an example example for you. Don't just give me a new job. Don't just give me a new car, but give me an awesome witness. Give me an awesome example that I can live a life before others. Those that are looking at me, allow me to be more patient. Allow me to be more long-suffering. Allow me to show more love and more consideration. Allow me to be what you have called me to be in this last and evil day. Put your hands together for the Lord and give God some praise. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So they were asking God for some changes in their lives. These individuals, they were hungry for something. These individuals, they were 
thirsting for something. Uh, these individuals, they were asking for something. Uh, and these individuals, they were petitioning for something. Uh, Jesus said, uh, and I quote, uh, And all things... Uh, Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, uh, believing ye shall receive. Uh, but Jesus, he didn't stop right there. Uh, he went on so far as to say, uh, ask and it shall be given you. Uh, seek and ye shall find. Uh, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Uh, for every one that asketh, uh, they receiveth. Uh, and he that seeketh, uh, he findeth. Uh, and to him that knocketh, uh, it shall be open. How many of you have asked God for something? How many of you have received it? I can see a lot of witnesses in here who have come into the house of God and have asked Him for the Holy Ghost and have received the Holy Ghost. If you receive the Holy Ghost, give God some praise because He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be told, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now Jesus, now he began to speak to the fathers. Uh, Jesus asked, uh, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, uh, will he give him a stone? Uh, or if he ask a fish, uh, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Uh, if ye then, uh, being evil, uh, so Jesus was speaking to some evil people. Uh, he was talking to some evil folk. Uh, we got an evil people in the house. Uh, don't raise your hand. Uh, oh, bless the name of Jesus. Uh, he said, if ye then, uh, being evil, uh, know how to give good gifts unto your children, uh, how much more, uh, how much more uh, shall your heavenly Father uh, give the Holy Ghost uh, Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Uh, to them that ask him, uh, if you want something from God, uh, if you want the Holy Ghost from God, uh, all you got to do is ask him. Uh, all you got to do is open up your mouth uh, and just ask God. Uh, ask the Father what you want for her. Uh. Open up your mouth. Uh, no more excuses. Uh, oh, he won't give it to me. Uh, it's probably because you didn't ask. Uh, or you didn't ask him in the right way. Uh, he's looking for a contrite heart. Uh, he's looking for a broken spirit. Uh, you got to go to God correct. Uh, if you plan to get something from him. Because uh, he's not going to just give you something uh, that you're not going to use. Uh, oh, he wants you to use uh, what he gives you. Uh, because that's the whole purpose. Uh, to make you better. Uh, he wants to give it to you uh, so he can make you better. Uh, so he can make you stronger. Uh, so he can make you holy uh, so he can make you his bride uh, put your hands together for the Lord uh, and give God some praise oh, hallelujah 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 you have to have a hunger uh, for the Holy Ghost uh, you have to have a thirst uh, for the Holy Ghost uh, you got to be determined uh, for the Holy Ghost uh, you got to be passionate uh, to receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, you got to really want the Holy Ghost uh, if you want to receive it. Uh, somebody ask your neighbor, uh, are you thirsty yet? Uh, are you thirsty yet? Uh, oh, if you're thirsty, uh, oh, come on into the house uh, where the Lord can give you what you need. Uh, but you got to be thirsty. Uh, he's not going to give it to you uh, if you're not thirsty. Uh, you got to be thirsty uh, if you want to receive it. Uh, Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. So the Bible says, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they were there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Somebody was praying. 
with a strong desire. Somebody had a supplication with a strong desire. Somebody wanted to change with a strong desire. They were all on one accord in prayer and supplication. There was Peter. There was Jane. There was John. There was Andrew. There was Philip. There was Thomas. There was Bartholomew. Let's not forget Matthew. There was Jane. There was Simon Salotus. There was also Judas, the brother of Jane. Oh, let's not forget the women. There were some women there too. Also, there was Mary, the mother of Jesus. And there was a few more. There was the brothers of Jesus. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, were you there? Were you there, Mother Joanne? Oh, were you there, Brother Jeff? Oh, hallelujah, be to God. How about you, Sister Angela? Brother Jason. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody was there receiving the Holy Ghost. I know my wife was there because she got the Holy Ghost. I know my mama was there because she got the Holy Ghost. Oh, somebody had to be there because the house is full of Holy Ghost believers. Put your hands together for the Lord. somebody in the house was there there's too much Holy Ghost filled people up in here so y'all had to be there I'm just going to take it that you were there because there was 120 and I know we don't have 120 in here so I know we all must have been there and if you wasn't there come next time oh never mind you here right now you here right now you ain't got to wait you can get it right now all you got to do is ask Put your hands up in the air and just ask the Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your presence. I need to be saved. I need some power. I need what I got to have in order to make it. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, now they're all speaking. They're all speaking with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance, the Holy Ghost came while they were praying. That means they had to be saying something. Oh, you got to open up your mouth. If you expect to receive the Holy Ghost, you can't keep your mouth shut and expect God to speak through you with your mouth shut. You got to open up your mouth and say, Glory! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! You got to open up your mouth and show the Lord you appreciate Him. You got to open up your mouth if you mean business. Now, this is the thing that you got to have some business here. With some business church. It ain't about games. It ain't about funning around. Self salvation is business. This is some serious business. We're talking about soul. We're talking about eternity. Spinning it somewhere. And I don't want to spin it in the lake. But I want to spin it in glory. I want to spin it with my Savior. I want to spin it with my Father. Put your hands together for Jesus. And give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. The Bible goes on to say that the multitude was confounded. Those that heard the praisers, those that heard the worshipers. Oh, I'm sure when people walk by here and we're in here praising and we're in here worshiping, they probably say them folk must be crazy. Then they're making all that racket. They're not making all that noise. They need to stop all that racket. They need to stop all that noise. They must be out of their mind. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. They were confused. They were perplexed. They didn't know what to think. They thought they were drunk. They thought they were full of new wine. But Peter. Somebody say, but Peter. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Standing up with the eleven. 
Now there's a revelation for you. They were all sitting. But when the Holy Ghost came, they were standing now. Oh, somebody ought to give God some praise. You must know that when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you can't sit down on your praise. You can't sit down on your worship. But you got to stand up. You got to clap your hands. You got to do your dare. You got to give God some praise. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, oh, you just can't sit there. Oh, they were sitting down, but now they were standing up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can't just sit there when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. But Peter, he says, oh, no, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Now, there must be some alcoholics back then. Because if they was getting drunk before 3 o'clock, there must have been a problem. But if you drink after 3 o'clock, you must be all right. So they suppose that they must have been drunk. Oh, but Peter, he said, no, they're not drunk. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God... I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. From what I see, I see in fillings of the Holy Ghost. I see saved people getting saved, getting full of the Holy Ghost. That's telling me right now we still in the last days. Oh, it ain't too late. You still got a chance to make it. He's still pouring out his spirit. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, so he had to tell them they're not drunk. As Joel said it, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Somebody tell your neighbor. He's pouring it out. Just tell your neighbor, he's pouring it out. He's pouring out the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. This is the last day. And he's pouring it out. Job prophesied about this. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call, that whosoever shall call, that whosoever shall call. I hope somebody's listening because somebody got the call. If you don't have the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to be calling right now. He said that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you got to call his name. You got to open your mouth and call out for Jesus. He don't want a text message. He don't want you to fax him a message. But he wants you to open up your mouth. The mouth that he gave you to give him praise with. Open up your mouth and call out the name of Jesus. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. All you got to do is call him. He's pouring it out. He's pouring it out. You're the vessel. You're the container. All you got to do is ask him to fill you up. All you got to do is ask him to fill you up and he'll fill you up. If that be true to you, put your hands together for the Lord. And give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All you got to do is ask him. All you got to do is ask him. He wants to give it to you, but you got to ask him. It is time out, time out, time out, time out, time out for them excuses. I can't get it, I can't get it, I can't get it. Quit working for it and ask him for it. Quit working for it. You got to ask him if you want it, ask him. He will give it to you. He's pouring it out. But you got to be thirsty. You got to be thirsty. See, you got to be thirsty. Now, he wants to give you something if you're thirsty. You know I'm thirsty right now. Thank you, Jesus. You got to be thirsty. You got to want him. You got to want him. You got to have a hunger for him. And if you got the Holy Ghost, stay hungry. If you got the Holy Ghost, stay thirsty. Whatever it takes you to get hungry, do it. Whatever it takes you to get thirsty, do it. 
I know one thing makes me hungry and thirsty. Working. When you get in here, you coming in here to do some work. You working for Jesus. You working for the Lord. If you're working for him, you ought to be hungry. If you're working for him, you ought to be thirsty. Are you thirsty yet? Are you thirsty yet? He wants to fill you. He wants to fill you. Is anyone thirsty today? Is anyone hungry today? Now, we, we, we're not in the upper room, but we are in a place full of Holy Ghost-filled believers. And we can pray with you. We can pray on you. We can baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And according to your repentance, you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. It's a promise. But he said, repent. That's the condition. You have to repent if you expect to receive. You're not going to receive it any other way. 